Now, it's going to happen sometimes on an exam. They're going to give you a question like A, and they're going to say solve for n algebraically. If they say solve for n algebraically, they mean that you need to use your formula. And your formula says that n choose 2 is n factorial over 2 factorial and n minus 2 factorial. Again, we notice that the bottom two combined add up to the top one as a way to help you remember the formula. Now, how do we simplify factorials? We expand the bigger one. So which is bigger, n or n minus 2? n. So we start expanding it. It'll be n times, and one less will be n minus 1. And we keep going until we get to n minus 2. Is it all right if I write 2 factorial just as 2? These will simplify, still equal to 28. So now we have n times n minus 1, all divided by 2, equals 28. What would you like to do next? Multiply both sides by 2. And on this side, if you distribute, you get n squared minus n. What kind of question is this? Quadratic, make one side equal to 0, and factor. And we get two different possibilities. n is equal to n, negative 7 and n is equal to 8. If we go back to our original question and see which one makes sense, you can't do a negative factorial. So if I have negative 7, that will make me take a negative factorial. So the only one that works is n equals 8. That's how you would solve A algebraically. Some of these will not be nice algebraically. For example, C and D for those ones it will be best just to guess and check and plug numbers in first of all does it make sense with a combination if you have four items and you need to choose a certain number of them you can't choose more items than you have you have four books to choose from because you want a prize you can't choose five books So there's not that many to check until you get the right, you know, get the right answer. You know that 6 choose 5 is the same as 6 choose 1, and that's going to be 6. So you know it has to be more than that. So then you try 6 choose 2, and you find out that that's 15. So you know it has to be more than that. So you try 6 choose 3, and then that one works out to be 20. So then you'd be able to say that r equals 3. So some of them will work nice for algebraic, some of them will not work nice algebraically. Generally speaking, ones that have n choose 2 will work out nicely algebraically, because if you do that, you will always get a quadratic, which is easy to solve. So on an exam, most likely if they're going to have one that's going to get you to solve it algebraically, it'll be an n choose 2. If you have an n choose 4 one, like that one, if you want to try to solve that one algebraically, you're going to get, when you expand it, an n to the 4. And it will be factorable, but then you have to use your synthetic division and long division and your factor theorem and your remainder theorem in order to figure that out. Yeah. So another good strategy for that one No, I'm, I don't think so. They might have an n cubed one, because then it's not that hard to factor it with the sort of like the box problem, the volume problem that we did, where we had to do it algebraically. But an n4 one.
But what's going to happen here if you have n factorial over 4 factorial n minus 4 factorial equals 35? First of all, 4, I'm going to write this, expand it. It's going to be n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3. And then the n minus 4s would cancel out, and you just have 24 on the bottom equals 35. And most people, if they're solving this one algebraically without a calculator, they're not going to expand that and get an n to the power of 4 because it's going to get too big. Instead, they're going to multiply both sides by 24. And then you see that I would get 24 times 35. And since it's non-calculator, I'm not even going to figure that out. What I want to do here is I'm going to take 24 and 35, and I'm going to break it down into four numbers all multiplied together. How could you break 24 down into two numbers? Close. 6 and 4. And 35. How could you break 35 down? 7 and 5. Do we have four numbers in a row? Yes. We have 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. Can you see that n would have to be 7? And one less would be six, and one, two less would be five, and three less would be four. How would you figure that out? That's how I would figure this one out without a calculator. <laughs> so this is a way to recognize that on this side I have four consecutive numbers, and on the right side, so this is how you would do it if it was a non-calculator. But the algebraic way would be even more complex because you'd have to multiply it all out and multiply the 24 times 35 by, then use the factor theorem and remainder theorem. So it wouldn't be that much fun.